The trucking industry it just cannot find enough drivers and retailers. They're trying to adjust to higher shipping costs and inventory demands that are higher at the exact same time. CH Robinson is one of the world's biggest shipping logistics companies, handling about $21 billion worth of goods each year. Half of that is for retailers like Walmart, Target, Dollar General, and Whirlpool. Bob Beasterfield, he's the CEO of CH Robinson, and he joins us now. Bob, thanks for being here. Great to be back with you, Frank. Good to see you. So we just did a quick recap. The capacity crunch has been well reported, and now we're facing a brand new situation. We have millions of Americans expected to get stimulus checks and expected to spend a lot of that cash on things online and maybe even in retail stores. What does that mean for your business, and what are you hearing from your customers? Yeah, I think you hit it on the head. You know, you, in your introduction, you talked about the supply chain constraints that we've seen, and those continue to be ongoing. I think we we saw, you know, just in the past few weeks with the weather event here domestically, you know, very broad-based disruption in the domestic supply chain. And really, we're, we're facing three things. We're facing a labor shortage on the trucking side and the warehouses and the ports. We're facing constrained capacity across trucks, trains, the rails, you know, across ocean freight and air. And then we've got this, this demand, and that demand is only going to increase as the stimulus comes forward, and eventually we get some infrastructure spending as well, and those are converging to really to disrupt supply chains, both in terms of speed and availability and supply chain reliability, as well as cost, which continues to, to ramp up on a year-on-year -year basis. So, Bob, we were just showing a graphic just now. Uh, it showed that returns are up over 250% year-to-date, really an eye-popping number. I think all of us, Tyler, I don't know about you, I, I buy three things in different sizes, different colors. I send back the other two I don't like. I think mm -hmm. it's a common thing. Bob, what are you hearing from your customers when it comes to keeping inventory in their warehouses or in their stores? And also, what, they're hearing, what you're hearing about returns. How are they handling that? Because that can often cost two or three times what it costs to ship something to someone. Yeah, no question. For our business last year, I think our returns business was up, you know, close to 200 percent. And I saw a study recently that said over the course of the next several years, there's going to be north of four million items they're going to need to, you know, continue to be focused on this reverse logistics and the returns. And so the whole premise behind e-commerce is we need to tighten the supply chains, make the supply chain shorter with higher level execution in order to really fulfill at the click of a button like we're all used to experiencing. And with these disruptions today, it's causing that to be even more and more difficult to do, really requiring better downstream demand planning and transportation planning in order to execute it effectively. I've got two questions, uh, Bob. I'll ask one quick answer. Why is there a labor shortage and how will you fix it? You know, really within trucking, there's been an ongoing driver shortage for quite some time, but today it really feels like a, a strong structural issue. And there's a number of things that are that are feeding that. You know, one, the Paycheck Protection Program last year, we saw drivers leave the marketplace. We've got an aging driver population today. Through COVID, a lot of the driver schools were not operating at peak capacity or some operating at all. And so we continue to see the structural challenge to get drivers into, into long haul trucks. And that's been an, an industry challenge for a while. But as we get into a strong, you know, back-end economy this year, there's going to be a lot of other options for, for work for people that could be truck drivers. Construction, infrastructure, building and such will all serve as substitution jobs and make it more challenging to get drivers in seats. Mm -hmm. Second quick question. I have to think that your business is a logistics business, but it is also an increasingly a data business. How is data changing your company today and how will it in the future? Yeah, data is the new oil, as the saying goes, and, and we really pride ourselves on the, on the data advantage that really drives our business. We've transitioned from being a transportation company to truly a data-driven supply chain company. And today, across that $21 billion of freight that we manage, the 19 million shipments, the value is that data that we can capture across the global supply chain at every step, and then take that data and help our customers to rethink and reimagine how effectively they can manage their supply chain. So we're an execution company, but we're also a data company as we bring new solutions to life for our clients. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.